collecting the money up front. They weren't selling things like packages and subscriptions that have put them in an autopilot up front or immediately upon delivery of service so that they don't actually have to raise money at all if they don't want to. Um, a month or helping you get to a number that helps you hire your first team member. So we want to create basically a outside of getting to their goal income uh, or, you know, for help them all All right, guys, welcome back to another episode on the Dynamic Lifestyle Podcast. We have the awesome Chinwe Onyagara with us. I didn't butcher that, right? Ooh. You get a hundred points for that Ooh. delivery. <laughs> uh, you, you know that little emoji where the, the, the teardrop things like just running down your head? <laughs> I, I felt this guy's nerves right now. <laughs> Yeah, but good. I'm glad that I got that uh, down. So thank you so much for coming on the show, Chinway. I'm excited, uh, you know, just to interview you, uh, have a great conversation. So how are you doing, by the way? I'm doing really, really well. It's honestly, it's great to be here with you, Eric and Chris. Uh, it's just an honor to be able to connect with you and your community. Yeah, right on. Well, let's let's jump into this juicy conversation. Um, we like to have some fun here on the Dynamic Lifestyle Podcast to get you to just like tell a little bit more about who you are. So we're gonna do what's called rapid dynamic questions, quick like just like uh, quick questions, quick answers. You ready for that? Like the Faustian survey. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> exactly. Oh, so we talked a little bit before we hit record. So where are you born and raised? You know, I was born and raised in Boston, Massachusetts. So I, I parked my car in Harvard Yard. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to have to say, so Celtics fan and uh, New England Patriots? Exactly. Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what I want to know, Chinway, is like you said you moved from San Francisco, right? So we're, we're very familiar with the Bay Area. We're born and raised in Northern California. And, you know, we moved to Dallas, Texas during the pandemic. So, you know, like what has, I guess, been the biggest lesson you've learned from moving from like San Francisco to, you said, Northern Virginia, right? Yeah. So, you know, San Francisco is awesome uh, for so many things. Uh, clearly, all things tech, which is uh, the business that we run. Um, but in making the move, you know, we have a family uh, and we have two toddlers. And when you move to the, we're in the DMV area. So it's uh, the DC, Maryland, Virginia area. It mm. is so family friendly. Mm. There's a park every two blocks. And so um, just at different stages of your life, uh, you may need to go and move and shift to different places, including move and shift your business. Yeah, absolutely. I like yeah, it. Yeah. We'll talk, we'll talk about that more because we were in that very fast paced element living in Los Angeles for seven years, you know, just hustling, bustling out there. And like, since we've come out to Dallas, like things have really slowed out and a lot more clarity with the piece, you know? Exactly. You know, yeah. you, when you're running a business, it's also about the joy, right? Yeah. It's not just about the hustle and bustle and you've exactly. got to you know, stay centered around that too. Yeah. 100%. Peace of mind for sure. So uh, finish this sentence. The world needs more of. Solopreneurs, people who work for themselves. Oh, I like it. Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that too. And kind of just to cap this off with these rapid uh, dynamic questions. So what, what is like the biggest worry these days for you? You know, for me, <clears throat> the biggest worry is that we, you know, as a society, um, that we lose sight of our humanity. Like yeah. we should just be, you know, we should lead with lo love, lead with, lead with kindness. Uh, life's too short, right? And so we should just try to be uh, more understanding towards one another and, um, and really lead with a service mentality. How can mm. I be of service to someone today? Because mm. if everyone did that, it would come back around ten, tenfold. Yeah, I agree. I love that. I got to give you a virtual fist bump for that. <laughs> Seriously, that's like real talk, though. That's honestly, I, I agree 100% like that we need more of that, you know, more love. Yeah. Well, you are officially off the hot seat. So that was good. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's dig into more of just like entrepreneurism. Um, a lot of listeners on here are entrepreneurs or they're aspiring entrepreneurs and you've been in the game for a while. So to like, talk to me, like what, what got you into entrepreneurism? What fascinated you? And was this something that originated maybe like from your family? Did they, did they push you to do this or were they more about just like, Hey, play it safe and get like a nine to five job in a career? It's a great question. <clears throat> I like to joke since I've become a parent that, you know, as children, you don't, you don't actually make children. 
uh, you, they just pass through you, right? Uh. Like they are who they're going to be. <laughs> and, and I was who I, I was going to be at a very young age. I, was think, I think age of seven, I would have uh, all my friends, we'd come up with business ideas, um, everything from like the babysitter's club or the lemonade stand. And I was always the one who's writing the business plan for the next lemonade stand. Someone else would be talking about the sugar and how much should we put in? I'd be thinking about how do we get another lemonade stand on the next block? Um, so it just energizes me. So it's all, it's always been who I am. And so I went down a path where I started by just saying, look, I need to get really, really good at solving business problems so I can go out and help folks solve those problems. Uh, so I started off doing consulting, management consulting with a company called McKinsey and Company. It's a global consulting firm that works mm -hmm. with Fortune 500 companies. And at some point, I felt like I had my toolkit. I had okay. a set of uh, a set of tools to help you know figure out what markets to do business in, figure out how to grow, to figure out how to make money, and I then decided to go out and uh, work with much smaller businesses to do just that. Okay, gotcha. And was that was that uh, was that moment scary? Like like walk me through that. Like when you just how did you know that it was like time for you just to like take a leap of faith and just do your own thing? Yeah. So I think there's three things. One is. Like I worked 80 hour weeks for McKinsey and company. Okay. So I was like, absolutely, <laughs> you know, you know, uh, pedal to the metal. And so for me, it was like, gosh, if I'm working this hard, why don't I actually do this for my own business for myself, work for myself in that way. So in that way, the transition was really smooth. The second thing was I had always set my sight on at some point, I'm going to go out and do this. Um, and so for me, it was just about what's that right point. And for me, it was about saving enough money. So I had about oh, okay. 18 months worth of savings. And I said, like, do or die, I'm yeah. going to yeah. get my first client and be able to pay and cover my, my, my rent at the time. Yeah. And yeah. that made me a lot more confident. Love yeah. it. And I want, I want, I want, uh, I want to ask you just about like the lessons learned from like the 80 hours a week of working. Cause like mm -hmm. Eric said, we do have like a big base of like entrepreneurs, health and fitness professionals as well too. So, um, a lot of them do like to work hard, but what have you, what have you learned from just like working 80 hours a week? Like when you're doing the consulting? Yeah. Three things. One is I was doing that in my twenties. And so <laughs> I had a lot more energy, right? I had a lot more energy and I could pull the all nighters and it was all good. And so I think, you know, earlier in life, if you're going to do that, you know, you, you want to do it earlier in life. That's one. Two is <clears throat> I had a very specific goal. So oftentimes the work, you know, like the project work I was doing probably would take 40 to 60 hours, meaning like that's the stuff I'm doing for the client. I would take another 10 to 20 hours to delve into other research, to really yeah. look at some of the other projects people are working on, because I really wanted to acquire that knowledge. So I added that additional time and went above and beyond because it gave me a quick start on new projects that I was going to be assigned to, but it also helped me fill that toolkit. So for me, just know why you're doing it, right? So you yeah. don't have to necessarily kill yourself, but if you are, if you're doing it for the joy or you're, you have a very specific kind of finite goal, then then there's like an, a beginning and end point. And I would say the third thing is, um, it cost me help wise. Yeah. Uh, you know, I actually, I, I don't know if this is, uh, this is definitely not broad knowledge, but I actually later in life, um, uh, diagnosed with, uh, stage three cancer. Oh, wow. And I've got to believe I can't draw a, a direct line, but I got to believe those hard pushing my body beyond what's normal cost has cost me. So now I'm cancer free for two years now Amazing. and no, no signs of it coming back, but I've got to believe that if I had taken better care of myself and, and, and achieved a bit more work-life integration um, or balance, I, you know, I wouldn't have had to go through that really tough spell. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Thank God though. Jeez, yeah. Thank God. And just like, thank you for being so like transparent, like with yeah. those lessons. I mean, these are great, you know, so guys take notes on this, rewind that part. I mean, those are some really awesome lessons learned. So I appreciate you like sharing those with us. So I want to transition to, so you said you did consulting, right? And you're working those 80 hour weeks <clears throat> is, so how did the idea for pocket suite like originate? And if you don't mind kind of talking about that and then talking about also like what is pocket suite and how it could help uh, people out. Awesome. Yeah. So I will start with the origin story and then tell you what it is. So um, this is like a very straightforward, <laughs> but 
kind of windy road. So I was at the time I'd left management consulting and I went out and I started raising money for small businesses, like solo professionals. And I was basically helping them get loans. Um, and so they would come and say, oh, I was rejected from bank loans. They'd go to our a site that we had built. They put in some information and we'd match them to the right lender. And we raised about $300 million in, in small business everything from basic, you know, small business loan to factoring non-predatory rates. And it was, so I was really excited about that. Unfortunately, when I looked under the hood of these businesses, I saw two things that really disturbed me. One is they weren't raising the money to grow. They were raising the money to just cover cash flow. And so they were eroding their margin. And I was like, that's not a good thing. So I asked the question, why are they not getting paid on time? And what I found was not that their clients weren't paying them on time because they didn't want to pay. It's that they weren't billing their clients on time. They weren't collecting the money up front. They weren't selling things like packages and subscriptions that have put them in an autopilot mode to get paid for the awesome services they were were providing. So I said, wow, that's a better problem to solve than just helping them raise money to erode their margin. Let them get paid up front or immediately upon delivery of service so that they don't actually have to raise money at all if they don't want to. Um, So that was the initial light bulb. The second light bulb was, I was a management consultant. I was on trains, planes, and automobiles four days out of five um, working on client sites. And so my entire life, much to my mother's chagrin, was outsourced. I'd have cleaners come into my apartment. I had trainers meeting me wherever I was. um, And um, everything I did was over text. And they were awesome. They would show up, they would do everything. And then 90 days later, I'd get an invoice. And I'd, it'd be a long list of times when they served me and I would have to cross reference it with my text thread. And I was like, usually on a plane saying, this is for the birds. This is not how I want to spend my time. I want to watch a movie on my in-flight, <laughs> the in-flight yeah. service. And so I complained um, to my actual, my husband at the time. And I said, gosh, this is awful. This is not a good way to be. And I had also had the hat, right. Of seeing these businesses not getting paid. And he says, wow, you guys do everything over text, which is so fast. Why can't they just, why can't you book them and pay them over text too? Mm -hmm. And that was the light bulb. Mm -hmm. And he at the time was engineer number five at a company called NetSuite, which Mm -hmm. builds major business management system for large companies. And he had been with the company so early on that by the time they got to a thousand engineers, they had gone IPO, he was bored. And so he says, yeah, I'm going to leave NetSuite and I'm going to do it all over again and build the same kind of system, but for much smaller businesses on their phone, because they're always on the go, they can do everything on their phone. And that was the beginning of the pocket suite story. He built it, we put it in the app store, and literally magic happened. Dog trainers, fitness trainers, uh, life coaches, people started using it because they were doing everything on like three separate devices. Their iCalendar uh, was on their phone. They were using Excel for their list of clients. Uh, they were doing using Square or PayPal or Venmo for getting paid. It was a mess. Yeah. They had to enter their client information three or four different places. Yeah. They never knew if the people on their calendar had actually paid them for the service. And so this uh, our, our, our V1 of Pocket Suite solved that. And so they started sending us feedback and saying, hey, can you add more? Can you add this? Can you add that? And that was really the beginning of the Pocket Suite story. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> that's it's, like, awesome. It's, just, it's just cool to hear like where that light bulb just came, right? And that's, I think it's a great learning lesson for a lot of people just listening because it's like sometimes we, we always are, are so fixated that we have to figure out the answers to these questions in, in like a, a, a quiet place or something like that. But maybe it's in a conversation. Maybe it's just through a podcast. Maybe it's just like with like your mom or like a relative or could be your husband, you know, and that's, that's the cool part, but it, it connected and you guys took action on it. And I, one thing I love about pocket suite too, is like the whole automation system. So tell me like why automation is so crucial for like health and fitness coaches in, in the future. Absolutely. So <laughs> at the, at the crux of pocket suite, we are a booking app that helps you monetize your time. Um, Whether you're a fitness professional, a health and wellness professional, you can use it to have your clients schedule you online or you can schedule them. You can make sure credit cards attached when they schedule you or they have pay you up front uh, with a package or a deposit. You can put them in autopilot with a subscription. You can message them through the app. 
uh, and communicate with them. You get your own business number so they can call you on it and it keeps your personal and business number separate. It's a CRM system Mm -hmm. that has powerful automation. I'll share with you. Automation is really important because consumers expect it today. Consumers can open up their phone, tap on DoorDash or Grubhub and get a pizza in 15 minutes. So why should they wait to be able to book you on your calendar by having to call you or send you an email and wait for a response? They don't want it. And you cannot operate that way. And if it if, if you take too long to get back to them, they'll move on to sure. another service provider. That's why automation is so, so crucial today. Yeah. Exactly. So it's, it's just pretty much like, like it's like, I always say the Netflix effect of things and it's just, it's just convenience. Right. And I mean, obviously the pandemic taught us a lot of this and a lot of learning lessons as to, you don't have to go to gyms. Like you don't have to dry places to get service-based businesses. And it's just like, if it's at the, the tip of your fingers, whether it's your phone, iPad, computer, I mean, it's like, that's going to be more convenient. Absolutely. It's all a convenience game now. Yeah, and we yeah. talk we talk to fitness professionals, health and wellness folks who say, oh, well, but I've always been doing this way. They, you know, I, they just text me and then I send them my Venmo. And it's like, even though you've always been doing it this way and it's familiar, it doesn't mean that it's actually the best experience for them. right? Yeah, yeah. And sometimes you just need to take that leap to change and then create a new set of behaviors. And yeah, and, 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 and rightfully so. But even to scale a, a business, it's like you have to have really good systems and automation. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. what we like to say that really creates the light bulb moment for, um, for fitness professionals is if you think about the number of interactions that you have to have with a client or a new lead before they're actually in front of you, either through video, mm-hmm. uh, video workout or in person at your studio, it's like 15 to 20 touches, oh, right? Yeah. It's, it's they come to your site, they have a question, they potentially have to call you if there's no way to automatically send you something through chat or what have you. They have they they want to book you for something. They have to send you a message or call you. You then have to respond. And if there is an availability, there's now a back and forth three or four times. Before they come in, you need them to fill out some information. Are you going to have them fax it to you? Are you going to have them download a PDF from your email? Or are you going to have them fill it out right when they're booking you? Uh So there is no back and forth. Sometimes you need them to sign a liability waiver or a form. Are you going to have to have them download it and sign it? Or can they sign it while they're booking you automatically? And so if you think about all of those, I have a question before my appointment. What should I bring? What should I bring to the class? Again, is there an automatic response with an FAQ or prep reminder before your appointment that answers all the typical questions? If you don't set up those touches and put them in autopilot, even though you've gone over these exact same steps over and over again with hundreds of clients, potentially, if you don't put an autopilot, you're basically uh, requiring your brain to hold those 15 touches for 15 be- fifteen touches times, let's say, 100 clients. Yeah. Imagine the number of times you have to go back and forth. That's what these systems are for, taking routine activities that happen over and over based on a very specific trigger or parameter and automating it still with your personal touch. Yeah, and right. so that's when it, the light bulb moment goes off for folks like, you're right, I'm doing those exact same things 15 times over and over with every single client. Yeah, How yeah. do I manage to do anything else? Exactly. Right? Yeah. Very you, good point. You guys have obviously like, you know, really solved some really good problems here for health and fitness coaches. So my next question kind of just to, to piggyback on this is like, where, where do you kind of see pocket suite going next? Right? Like, where's the putt going? <laughs> where are you guys kind of heading to solve more yeah. problems for them? <laughs> Caught that Wayne Gretzky reference. Awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's one of my favorites. <laughs> um, you know, where we're headed next is right now you join Pocket Suite within you know 30 to 60 days, you've grown by 30%. Your income has grown just because you've taken a lot of friction and leakage out. So where we're headed is we're going to get you to your goal income. So if you're a fitness trainer, you want to make $10,000 a month, guess what? That's 100 clients uh, making, you know, with, a, with 100 sessions per if you're doing personal i know i know my bad i know you're probably like dude why did you do that i just really quick and we'll be back to that video i just want you to join our free facebook group community for health and fitness coaches looking to get more online clients so just click the link below in the description box join it absolutely free we got some cool stuff in there a lot of videos do live trainings every couple of months on there and we got some cool freebies on there so just make sure to click the link below join our free facebook group for health and fitness coaches that want to level up and get more online clients to create more income impact influence independence back to the video training or it's uh you know 50 clients you know paying 20 dollars you know a, a 
as part of a class. Bottom line is we're able to help you with that fitness, you know, that fitness business math. And we're able to put every client that you have into autopilot. So we can predictably say in the next 60 days, you're going to be at $10,000 a month. And so we basically put everyone into autopilot so that, Hey, you just had a first client. We're going to send them a rebooking request. Should, would you like us to send them an upsell for a package? Would you like us to send them an upsell for a subscription based on certain triggers? So all of a sudden you've got this funnel that's just working in the background, this powerful CRM system, all with the goal of getting you to your $10,000 a month or getting you to your $15,000 a month or helping you get to a number that helps you hire your first team member. Yeah. So we want to create basically a predictable system that ultimately is working in the background, ratcheting you up to get to your goal. And once we do that, basically open up uh, the platform to make it possible for you to get financial services. Yeah. The single hardest thing for freelancers outside of getting to their goal income uh, or you know, for health and wellness, fitness, anybody working for themselves outside of getting your goal income is actually then getting great financial services. Yeah. Banks, insurance companies, health, health benefits, it's really hard. They don't know how to underwrite your forward-looking income and they don't trust it. On Pocket Suite, all of your clients have their credit cards on file. All of your repeat appointments are on file. Uh, health, uh, health, and, uh, health and benefit providers, banks, all of them are underwriting based on our data. So they're able to say, we're prepared to give a very attractive mortgage to this, uh, to this uh, health and wellness professional because we know on a forward-looking basis, they're on track to be able to continue making $10,000 a month for the next 12 to 18 months, which is as good as they're getting for W-2 employees that are yeah. able, that they're able to give those same rates to. So we basically open up the, our platform on an anonymized basis to be able to then surface really great offers for you as you're making that great money. So your business shifts you shift from working for your business and your business now starts working for you. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. And then let's say too, like one thing we're big on is really customer service and customer experience. So how would you say that this, this pocket suite app really solves that issue to bring a good client experience and just a, a good customer service to where the health and fitness coach is getting raved about, they're getting good reviews and they're still building that authority. It's great. So right now you're killing yourself providing awesome services to your clients. And oftentimes you don't actually even have enough time to then follow up with that client to say, hey, can you be an evangelist for me and my business? Pocket Suite's looking to automate a lot of that. So guess what? You that person just came to your class. You're going to send them, you know, a receipt. On that receipt um, is going to be a, hey, you know, here's a, you know, if you give me a referral, there's a discount off your next session. So it's built into the receipt. It's also built into their appointment confirmation, so that you can know when that person has referred you, who came in through that referral, and you can automatically provide that person with incentives for referring you to their friends and family. They book you every week. They're yeah. in your class every week. Tell your friends and family, give them an incentive, build it in so you don't. So, whenever they go to you, we want to also include a, a request for review on that receipt. They provide that review, we push it to Google, to Yelp, all yep. the places where folks are looking for awesome personal trainers and so forth. So, you rise in the ranks anytime someone is looking for a personal trainer or a fitness professional in your zip code. That's awesome. Whoo! Yeah. So I, I I would have to say, Chin, with um, Pocket Suite is pretty legit and pretty pretty on fire. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> I really, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. That's great stuff. And I really hope that like like the health and fitness coaches are listening to this um, interview. Really consider it. Go check it out. And we'll have it linked up in the show notes. We'll talk about that later. But let's shift let's shift gears here too. I want to talk more about just kind of like mindset and just like rituals, habits, and more lifestyle stuff. So um, what what is uh like. By what it was, I know you talked about. So, what the question I was going to ask was about when was the time you persevered uh, most? But you said earlier that you had a scare. What stage? What stage, stage three four. cancer? Yeah. Okay. So, how? Like, I'm so I'm interested by that because there's so many things that could have happened with that, and it could have defeated you. It it could have just it could have possibly taken your life. You know. So, how did you persevere through that? Yeah, it's a really good question. I had like an amazing support system. So I, I was very transparent and I shared it with the, my loved ones that so, you know, sometimes there's a, a fear and you don't want to you know upset anyone and you hide it. And so you're suffering in silence. 
I shared it with my loved ones. And the, the most impactful thing that came out of that is they, they implored me to change and they implored me to start really prioritizing my health. Yeah. Um, and that just meant, you know, going from four hours of sleep a night to, you know, banking yeah. seven to eight hours of sleep a night. Um, and so just making those shifts and saying, no, actually this, this is a fundamentally uh, what's going to make the difference for you in terms of what all the things you're trying to achieve. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's the thing that really got to me and they held me accountable when they saw me, you know, <laughs> reverting to old ways. Um, so that was really, it was really important. And a scare like that typically forces you to, to, yeah. to really reflect on what's important. Oh, yeah. uh, and I did. Yeah. Yeah. And then kind of like with that though, just talk about maybe like lifestyle structure systems you've kind of built in from that scare, right? Like you go from 80 hours a week to, I don't know how many hours work uh, a week you work now, but you did prioritize sleep more, right? So how does that look from going from like 80 hours a week to like now kind of like seven hours of sleep and like just your health first now? Yeah. I mean, the, the first thing that I did was I, I hired more folks, right? Like I was, I was doing a lot of things I shouldn't have been doing on my own because it was just the way I'd always done it. Right. And so we hired more team members to be able to take on more of the leadership responsibilities within our organization. At the time I had maybe 10 to 10 direct reports. Um, and I was like, that's not sustainable. And so I, we hired leaders who could come in the business and take you know, each of the respective uh, areas of our business to the next level, our product team, our customer success team. So that reduced the number of hours I spent a day just talking to people because most of business is people, whether it's your clients or whether it's your, your internal team members, you're dealing with humans and you got to give everyone their due uh, because it's not enough to just everybody knows the vision. You have to connect with people personally about that vision and, and, and show appreciation and recognition, and also give them an ability to engage and define and shape what happens next. That all takes time. And so when I say I work 80 hours a week, a lot of it, 60 hours of it was time with people. Yeah. And so if I, if I have to step back from that, the company will suffer if you don't also raise, you know, kind of lift up a leaders who can step in and continue that work. Um, yeah. So that I think was one of the single biggest things that I did. It's not that you drop the balls, it's that you shift who's really carrying that ball forward. Exactly. You know, and it's just like, it's the delegation skill you've been talking about, right? Where it's like, you're focusing on the high income, high impact, you know, tasks instead of the low income, low impact tasks. And that's something too, like we practice and preach with our you know students in our program and the health and fitness coaches, because they think they can wear all the hats and, you know, exactly. we, we were guilty of it too, you know? So yeah. great Everybody lessons. Sure is. Everybody, yeah. Everybody. At least there's two of you. So you can share the love. I know, but man, like I, I can relate with like how much you worked because there was a time where we were work seven days a week, you know, and like, yeah, we were younger and stuff like that too. And I still got the energy. I could probably still do it. Right, exactly. It's not going to serve me well. It's not going to serve my company. Well, it's not going to serve my, you know, my wife. Well, all that type of stuff, you know? Right. It doesn't, it actually also doesn't meet the, if you're hit by a bus test, right? Like yeah. if you're hit by a bus, does the company all fall apart? Cause literally you were carrying everything. You've got exactly. to build the infrastructure so that if, you know, God forbid, you know, you're taken offline for a period of time the company moves forward. Sure. So true. So true. Yeah. So then let's, let's talk about habits. Um, I've been talking about this as a late about just focusing more on habit-based goals and skills, as opposed to just like generic goal setting, right? That's such a, that's such a big, just like, Hey, set your goals. It's a, it's a new year, blah, blah, blah. And I think too many people focus on, on outcomes and, and milestones rather than the process. And right. the thing is with habits, they, they shape who you are. You know, if you become really good at just like, particular habits and rituals that, that you get better at those skill sets you, and you learn so much. So what are some like habits and rituals that have really served you well? And I would say even now, what are you working on within that context? Yeah, it's great. That's a great question. So I would say there are three habits that have really served me well. Uh, one is I write a letter to myself. Oh wow! Um, yeah. And I, and I, and I'm, it's me 10 years from now writing okay. to me today. Right. Mm -hmm. And and that letter is really talking about the life that I'm living 10 years from now and, and basically congratulating myself, thanking myself for making some tough decisions and um, and also illustrating how I'm, I'm how I'm feeling in the course of a given day and how I'm spending my day. So it's very it's unlike any other kind of 10 year goal plan where you have just a series of things because you can have all of those things, but it's like, how are you going to feel? At yeah. the end of that, you always right. think yeah. about these goals and then you hit them. It's like, I'm not feeling the way I thought I was going to exactly. feel. Right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. 
And so if you can visualize how you're going to feel 10 years from now and how you're going to be spending your day and who, you, who you're going to be surrounded by mm. and what you're going to be able to say is different about the world based on the work that you did, that gives you a true north that fundamentally allows you to kind of you know, find your way. It's not this hard and rigid list of, of to-dos. It's this, as I do, the to-dos will reveal themselves uh, yeah. towards this goal. And so that's become a practice for me um, every year to be able That's to look good. at that, that letter and update it if I need to, but it doesn't update very much, which is very interesting. If you're really true to how you want to feel and really true to what you want the world to be like, you know, as a result of your work, that stays pretty constant. The stuff that changes are the to-dos and how you're going to get there. Yeah. Um, if you center on that true note, it's really a powerful exercise. So that's one. Two is I meditate every morning. Okay. I don't, I don't do the, you know, think about nothing. I can't do that. It's very hard. My mind's always racing. <laughs> what I do is I use this app called Insights Timer. And it basically just, you know, has like literally hundreds of thousands of short vignettes from everyone from gurus to uh, yoga instructor, truck instructors, where they're actually talking about just the core principles of peace and balance and joy. And it just helps me think about it and recondition my mind around what my bottom line is and what I'm really working towards. Um, so those are, those are kind of two things that I do um, every morning, yeah. uh, or not every morning, sorry, two things that I do regularly. Yeah. yeah. And I Beautiful. love what you touched on too, just about like, you know, it, it's called, I think like achievement, like depression or anxiety. Right. Oh yeah. And I love how you mentioned that because so many people don't understand that, you know, and I'll tell the quick uh, version of this, but um, a guy at our church, his name's Steve Weatherford. I don't know if you know who he is, but he was the punter for the New York giants and it's oh, when they beat Tom Brady. Right. So Super wow. Bowl punter. Right. And he told this story to us in person and just, he said that he chased so many years, you know, trying to get the Super Bowl ring, trying to get the multi-million dollar contract, trying to get the fittest person or fittest uh, NFL player magazine, you know, cover magazine, when he achieved all three of those things, he looked back and he got that achievement depression. And he's just like, you know, what, what next now he felt so empty. And I was just like, wow, that is incredible. Like those three milestones that you chase and you feel empty and you have anxiety and you have, you know, uh, um, achievement depression. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. You're absolutely right. Yeah. 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 It's not, it's not the what it's the, it's the why. And it's the, how do you want to feel? That's exactly. also what life's about, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And even the process, enjoying that process. It's the process. Yeah. Yeah, you exactly. know, if you say you want to write a book tomorrow and someone says, great, next day you've written a book, you're done. You'd, you'd feel less than, right? It's because it's not about the book. It's about the process of struggling Absolutely. through your thinking about your story and iterating it and share, you know, like that's the thing, but we undervalue it because we're oh, so yeah. focused on, well, the book's not written yet. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or check it off the box, checking off the boxes checking off the boxes. <laughs> or, or comparison, comparing ourselves to everybody else. That's quote that's unquote crushing it and killing it on Instagram. That's you know? the word. That's the word. <laughs> and you never know how they're feeling. That's the thing. You'll never exactly. truly know, despite the Instagram, you know, oh, yeah. snapshot, exactly. you never really know how folks are feeling. So it's not worth it. Yeah. Oh man, I could go on on and on with this type of discussion. It's really good, but uh, we're coming towards the end of this interview, Chinwit, and this has been great. I, I really appreciate your time and stuff. And uh, you know, before um, I ask the last question, um, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge you again. Thank you so much for your time. I know you're a busy woman. Uh, you're driven. Uh, you sound like your super mom and superwoman. Which is <laughs> I great. appreciate that. I don't <laughs> know. Talk to my talk to my toddlers. Maybe maybe yeah. not. <laughs> Honestly, though, yeah, I get that vibe. So um, it's been a pleasure, and thank you for the wisdom. So. Um, my last question is, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, okay, let, okay. let me commend her too. Jeez. Oh, okay. I appreciate okay. that. All right. He, he thinks because he's a minute older, he can just like, you know, run the oh, show, but you, I'll tell you this thing. And so in my culture, it, it like ancient part of my culture, the twin that comes out second is actually older because you're seeing the other twin into the world. Oh, and I, it was so cool. It's so cool <laughs> I've never heard that, but you that's interesting. That. Now <laughs> things are making sense now. Okay. <laughs> All right. He's going to be pissed off after this. But <laughs> <laughs> on a serious note, though, just thank you so much for just like your transparency and yeah. just uh, your bravery and your courage too. you know, you, you battled cancer and you overcame it and it was a huge life lesson. And, you know, just for you having that courage to talk about it and battle it and, you know, express this on this um, podcast, it's going to help out tons of people that are literally working 80 hours per week and stepping back and back. Maybe I need to pump the brakes a little bit. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate that. You're welcome. So yeah, our, I my, you to talk to. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so my last question is what is it what does it mean to you to live a dynamic lifestyle? 
honestly, for me, it's about connecting with people. Um, so at, in my day to day, it's about uh, being of service to folks who have done the bravest thing, extraordinary people working for themselves and pursuing their dreams. Uh, and as a leader of the business, it's about creating opportunities for folks to come in and do their best work at our organization. We say that you know we we will be second to them running their own companies. We'll be the we'll be the greatest place to work, second only to them running their own companies because we want them to learn as much as they can and also feel like they've created a huge impact. Um, and then meeting cool people like you yeah. who have great stories where we can kind of trade notes on this this crazy thing called the entrepreneurial journey. Right. Right on. I love that. So where, uh, where can the listeners connect with you? And then is there anything that we could support you with? Absolutely. So for, check out our website, pocketsuite.io. You can sign up online, check out our, our app, put in your information, your name, your industry, and you're going to see an app that's specifically for fitness professionals that you can get started with and really take your business to the next level in automation. And then in terms of helping me, Honestly, the, the biggest help that you've done for me is to just uh, expose us to your community. Uh, you've Again, I, I said this at the beginning, but you've built an awesome community. You've uh, created a ton of trust. Um, and that's really hard to come by these days. Thank you. And just in terms of the, the, the sort of flavor of this interview, it's you make it about the people because it really is about the people. Yeah. Uh, and we're all on a journey. So I just appreciate the opportunity to have this conversation with your community. Yeah. You bet. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. So guys, absolutely. You heard her right. Go check out Pocket Sweep and they are a trusted sponsor to the show. So um, I'm telling you guys to check it out. It'll be all plugged up in the show notes. But once again, Chinwa, thank you so much for your time and just all the wisdom. We really appreciate it. Awesome. Great talking to you both. All right, guys. Until next time.